good day. This is Aura of Night from nytopical.net. Your fashion consigliere. Oh, got the pink hoodie on today. You only four had one hoodie. Blah! Oh my gosh, fam. You only you know. You only you know. I got an exceptional hoodie collection. Well, I'm growing an exceptional hoodie and do-rag collection. And that is exactly what I'm going to talk about today. In a bit of a more tongue-in-cheek way. But, seriously, I want to speak about um, the new menswear revolution. Which is probably how I should have, should have said it. <laughs> it's the menswear revolution. This is going to be a bit of a ranty type, discussion type, essay type video. Because I've got an amalgam of videos out there on my website, nytypical.net, under the fashion tab. And if you read each of those and watch some of my other videos, like if you watch all of them, you'll understand the kind of way I go about talking about fashion. Now, as an artist myself, as a designer myself, it's not, not really one of those things where you talk about your peers. But I said to myself, how I justify it is that, I'm talking about the way in which fashion is growing. As a trend forecaster, I looked at the landscape and understood like um 2015, 2016, so right after I left uni, it was like fashion is doing something different. And like obviously you had the Yeezy come out or like 2014 or something like that. And like that was a completely different time. Like if you think about 2014 back then today, it's like we can't even recognise it. Not in fashion, not in culture, not in communication, not in any of those things. So really and truly, there are no rules until like 2022, which is um, an article that you can find on my website, nytypical.net, about um, the culture of the 20s and um, black renaissance, right? And that is part of the many reasons why... Um, fashion is growing is because uh quite candidly black people are in it now hold up <laughs> give me a second to explain exactly what i mean so back in the day yeah like just as this hoodie i wear um so cleanly atop my dome 2002 2003 like early 2000s let's say um if you wore a hoodie outside being my color like um you would be considered a certain type of person regardless of your educational status how intelligent you may be how well spoken you may be just by walking down the street people thought and felt you were a certain way like in corner shops hoodie was hoodies weren't allowed like in um in department stores hoodies weren't allowed like it would set you would get these signs and i think you still kind of get them today of sorts when it's like two school kids in a day um, at one time so when i was literally in school you could only have two children like two people under the age of 18 in a store at any one time and that would tell you about the climate of the early 20s now i did actually grow up in a rough ends and all of that stuff area <laughs> and we call it the hood now because like we kind of like that's what we kind of do we reclaim words and we just reclaim symbols like and what virgil did bringing it all the way back up to like 2018 2019 he we kind of reclaimed the hoodie as a luxury and high fashion item now this isn't this wasn't like a um an easy thing to do by any means and what we had going on <laughs> around this time right now is like this menswear renaissance now outside of the scope of just um black people communicating we see like anyone just that if you wasn't born in high society or if you wasn't born in like a or if your family wasn't a person of station like i would explain in my balenciaga video it's like it doesn't matter if you're somebody of station like worthy of no like that elitist value is get is shrinking whereby we don't speak your language basically <laughs> like we don't talk like you talk we don't walk like you walk we don't care how you live 
pretty much anymore and like to me basically elitism is archaic now that being said i can just be as prestige as any of these elite in elite individuals right or oh, elitist individuals but i can just be, i can be just as gully as the gutter ones and that is basically it. it's like that communication between understanding um high art because that's really all we're talking about right now what we're talking about is art and just as everything that's built up from the 90s and the 80s where street art came involved just like we've got streetwear now it's the, basically the same thing just saying that black people made <laughs> um that black people made is now coming in vogue right and then I like you got Basque art who was obviously like high art luxury art and all of these other things and like there's so many other black names that you should know like um Patrick Turner who's who was a he's a couturier like and dressmaker and stuff like that and um at, like Andre Leon Tully like that's a name that you should be knowing like and if you want i can do a video on that as well but just simply staying it's like them man back then enabled us to do now what we're doing now in fashion so when you got street art being now street wear and this is where where we are at where we are communicating high art and doing what um the elitist category can do as well as create and talk to the people from where we're from like if you think about elitism like <laughs> it's literally only like one percent like if you've got like a university degree you're like really 20 percent of the population sort of i'm not really getting my numbers right but who cares <laughs> like and if you've got a master's degree it's even less and if you've got a phd it's even less and th and like all of those things were to um propel you in society when it was the um 21st century the 20th century sorry and um like now that's not the case so we're breaking down it's really breaking down the barriers although like the fact that and a degree is worth less now is only so to speak of how people are allowing um these people to dictate how we live but that's a different that's a different political discussion right now <laughs> we're talking about fashion right and the Venezuelan revolution so now you take it to today and us man from like the middle of england from london from the from just like you're a builder or like you like do work in sanitations or like you do anything that's like manual labor like we understand and we don't consider you less than because we come from that space we understand what manual labor is we understand what bus drivers are all of these other things like we care right and then there's this side and there's the other side where it's like okay yeah we know we care but we are also high art like when you're an artist you the most the most like significant significant value or significant title that you can have as an artist is being understood as high art like you speak of volumes to the people that you're speaking to now there was only a certain people that understood this art language but now like there's a whole amalgam of people now we started in 2015 2016 with like the hoodies and all of this stuff and like when you talk about the rise of streetwear but really and truly like them and then didn't even know what was happening they didn't care and back then i didn't really have a voice like that i was in marketing i was doing all of this and all of that the blah 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 but they didn't even know what's happening back then but then when we get to now it's like kind of opening itself up to a better understanding like it's completely different than what you saw in the early days of 2016 2015 when you talk talk about high beast culture and street luxury and um the common luxury of today's but yeah that's a different video for a different day but we are creating our own language of luxury in terms of being the eyes of today and creating that conversation this is the menswear renaissance so outside of just a hoodie we wear obviously completely different clothing and all men wear all different types of clothes 
but outside of androgyny like when like when we start getting into androgyny cross-dressing um and basically men in women's wear it's like less than one percent of all men in the whole entire world like when you start getting into less economically rich areas there's no such thing as you want to wear women's wear because it is wearing clothes that are of need to you and all men understand that we need a need um we have a need for clothes so that that whether you are an industrial um worksman where you need hard boots and hard hats and gloves and all of these other things whereby these stuff are like waterproof or shank proof like um cut proof i should say and uh and like the designs that um stop chainsaws because of the fiberglass are in them and all of these other things like the quality fabrics are out there that is completely different from that like, completely separate and completely understandable that it is separate from what we do right it's just different like genuinely speaking everything that we do is just different so we're, like whether we're going to a party or like just speak like um going to an event let's say you kind of want like there's different types of men in like because i'm still only speaking about the first world right now because really and truly art is only a developed um situation it's like that we ro like really shouldn't be talking about it as it as art isn't a luxury which is also another essay that i have out there but art is this luxury that we have to be able to speak and talk to people that speak the language that we speak and be able to transcend those of any economic status or any social status and be able to speak to them say this is the language that we're speaking now so it outside of just um asymmetry androgyny um the cross-dressing and women's wear there is this place where like the nine percent of men need to be guided through and i spoke about this in my a cold war 2020 review that's actually on my website there's men's wear that needs to be guided through and spoke to in a certain type of manner like all of these men that are really wearing clothes out like, just men's wear it's like there's different designs there's different fabrics there's different detailing that you can use to to correspond to men's wear outside of making a dress or making it industrial wear or making it a hoodie or something like that like men can speak that language but nobody has been speaking it to us as a whole and that's where we get all of these different designers like um kirby's um jean raymond of pierre moss and samuel ross and even virgil abloh to an extent and um telfar and uh there's well there's bear do as well um and then when well you get into like um the charles jeffries but um kiko kostelanov that is another guy and uh they're just bear, bear man that speak this language of we are living in this space and creating and i'll make a i'll make a video for that as well like men that are just speaking to men outside of the lens of um outside the lens of all of the other things that what what people want to consider as high art for men all right us as men have this um have this weight on our shoulders where people don't speak to us as if we understand art like art would be considered an innately woman thing because of the emotion that is or an innately feminine thing like when i grew up art would be considered feminine like you being a painter all of that like the girls liked you because you're an artist and that is still to an extent what happens today but it art is an innately feminine thing and because you can speak through your clothes now in that there is the language that you can use to speak to men and well that's the reason why a lot of men were dressmakers but and menswear design wasn't so prevalent today but today menswear is one of the like one of the fastest growing spaces in fashion like there is so many things that are happening in women's wear but 
menswear is actually growing phenomenally and that is like part of the reason why i started making this video series just to document the people who are moving that right and that being said um there's people that are speaking to men in the menswear language of art and walking us along this journey where we are speaking to each other and guiding each other like me who I mainly make this, these videos to man them that are from where I'm from that speak the language that I speak now obviously um, they, it transcends because of the type of video that I make it transcends people that are from where I'm from but that only speaks to the type of language that men like to speak which is the language of art that men like to speak and that um that only like grows the men's industry so that i'm i'm also a portal rather than someone that is actually looking upon the people that are creating the art and criticizing it like i'm not criticizing the art i'm just um helping people along this journey as well on the journalistic side but um, more so on the documentation side where we do understand this language of art because we are making our own language of art and what we're doing now is completely different and completely new and obviously these people outside don't get it yet but I get it and that's not um that's not uh, to say that I'm better because I get it. That only says that I get it because I'm from where they're from and they're speaking my language. Like, as soon as I saw um, what Yeezy was, I knew what he was doing. Now, to the extent, no, I didn't know. That billion dollar company, I didn't know that. But I knew the language that he was speaking and obviously it transcends and men, men are buying into it, which only goes to show that men speak the language of art just as much and the language of masculinity which is like what so many people are questioning in like 2015 20, even before that let's be honest like people are trying to put man in dresses from time but that's neither here nor there <laughs> the language of masculinity goes further than to question it in your clothing and like making men soft and all of that nah like <laughs> you're really speaking to a, a subsection of men but us man are speaking to the wider demographic and saying we speak art as well and that is what we do and no matter what um or what level you are um wherever you come from we can speak the language and because it transcends um the values of whatever masculinity may be if, um women can understand it men can understand it and we all can wear it and we can all see it and understand it and respect it as art, which is the main thing, is respecting men making art as art. As well, like men, men respecting men making art as art that they would wear. And yeah, <laughs> that is the end of this video. <laughs> Thank you so much if you're actually at this space. But yeah, if you are at this space, then probably subscribe or um, I am glad that you're subscribed and listening to the videos. And yeah, you have a better understanding of why I make these videos. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. I would love you to like the video if you learned something. Um, if you want to like um, see a video like um, of one that I spoke about. Of a topic that i just touched on but didn't really actually dive into if you want to see a video on one of those yeah definitely comment and like the video yeah and i said like the video if you learned something thank you so much <laughs> this has been aura of night from nytypical.net your fashion consigliere and it <laughs> christopher's bodyguard the definite and the other queen's moves <laughs> hey himself <laughs> bless up for your feet to your head top and i'm done
luxuries, which is um, rarity. Like there's certain types of luxury, like there's rarity, there's pain luxury, which means like you take hours and hours and hours and like it takes months to make something like a um, Lamborghini would be considered that. Um, an AP would be considered that. Like, and there's so many other different designers and watchmakers are out there. Um, hopefully, I'll put up the list, but this video is not that. But if you do want that video, I can make it. But yeah, there's so many other people that have designated this name of luxury through pain. And then there's the passion. So, there's a people that look for and feel to speak a language that they don't really know. So that is the people that um, discover like there's different types of way that they weave fabric in India, let's say, or like um, the Japanese art from uh, <laughs> the Japanese printed art that um, is rediscovered. Right. But they don't reclaim it anymore, which is a different thing. Like um, the mask that they found in Africa and gave to the queen and all of these and the diamonds that they found in there. It's like all of those type of thing. 